big medicine in a little plant. You know, I think it can be easy for us as herbalists to sometimes think the most powerful medicines are those that, you know, have incredible adaptogenic properties or rejuvenate our immune system or the most potent antibiotic herbs. But, you know, to me, I feel like sometimes we can have really big medicine in a really humble plant. And that's why I've really grown to love cleavers over the years. And you know, this is a remedy I've shot a few videos on in the past, but it's just a plant that I keep going to, I keep working with. It grows all around me here in the Pacific Northwest. And it's a plant that I've used a lot and just seen profound healing effects for a lot of people through this plant. So wanted to feature cleavers again here on the plant path and do it kind of in our new uh, format for doing some of the plant profiles here on the blog and uh, we've got a really nice patch back here at our lower barn so I'm gonna head on over to the lower barn and check out cleavers all right everyone so here we are in uh, this beautiful lush little woodland environment that we have here on the land which is such a perfect example of the habitat where cleavers really loves to reside here. This plant commonly is found in really kind of moist, shady areas of the forest. And I find that it always really loves to grow and just like there's a lushness um, to the areas where this plant grows. And I think a lushness to the environment that this plant creates uh, where it grows uh, that just feels to me kind of like really magical and special. Um, so one of the interesting things about cleavers is that another term, common name for this plant, is bed straw or Our Lady's bed straw. And that's because of an association that it has with the deer. And it's very common for the deer to bed down in patches of cleavers. And I uh, even heard of mama deers having their little baby deers in patches of cleavers as well. And uh, so it kind of has this traditional association with the deer and uh, and I think that's always kind of interesting to note because animals can inform us a lot about herbal medicine. In fact, seeing how animals interact with the plant world is how many people discovered medicinal plants. So cleavers, the Latin name is Gallium aparine. And this is a plant that has a long-standing historical usage in European medicine and North American herbalism. And uh, I think it's, it's really become one of my favorite herbs over the years, um, which is interesting because it's not like, uh, you know, it's not like one of these rejuvenative tonic herbs that you can use to strengthen your vitality or like, uh, you know, it's definitely like a daily use herb. It kind of has a pretty specific application, uh, but it has some very unique properties that uh, I have come to really love over the years and seen it be very, very effective for. Uh, so talking about some of that here in this video. Um, so it's, I know it's kind of like hard to see for those of you maybe that aren't familiar with cleavers. It's probably a little hard to tell what, what is here and what here is cleavers. Uh, cleavers is this one. I don't know if you can see it or if the camera's focusing in on it, but you know, it's got these really tall slender stems and these leaf whorls that go around it. And it, the, the most notable thing about this plant is that it's super sticky, right? It's kind of like, almost feels like scotch tape or, or maybe even like Velcro a little bit. Um, and one of the ways that it grows is that it climbs on all of the other plants that it grows around. So we've got really tall like reed canary grass in this area. So the cleavers really likes to climb up the reed canary grass. It climbs up the nettles. Heck, it's even reaching up and climbing onto this tree here. And I've seen cleavers get very, very tall actually, depending on how tall the herbs around it are, or plants around it, it can grow on. Um, which is a very interesting signature actually that I will talk about at the end of this video because to me that signature of the way cleavers climbs on things and clings to things and attaches to things uh, is very indicative of actually its psycho-spiritual properties which this is one herb that I've actually have had a, a lot of experience in working with it with clients and things like that in that context. So the taste of the herb is, you know, I always say it, kind of, it just tastes green <laughs> to me. It has a, which we might say is kind of almost like a minerally taste. We might refer to it as actually a salty plant. It kind of has like this crispy, fresh, juicy, moist 
green flavor, um, which uh, it's like, how can you describe a flavor as a color? I don't know, that just tastes green to me. <laughs> but we would probably define it from the context of herbalism, we would say that it's uh, more considered like a salty flavored plant. Um, and it's relatively mild and not unpleasant. Um, and moving into its actions, you know, the way that I like to best describe the actions of this plant is that it is really ultimately operating on the waters of the body. So we see first that this is a very nice diuretic plant, specifically a soothing uh, or relaxant diuretic. And that means that it's going to increase the secretion or excretion of fluids from the body through increasing urine output um, and it is uh, re a relaxant diuretic these are these are the diuretics that tend to be more kind of cooling and inflammation modulating and soothing to like a hot inflamed irritable urinary tract um, so that is key action number one. Key action number two is that this is an alterative plant. And actually I would say that's really its main action is that it's an alterative, meaning that it facilitates in opening the channels of elimination and supporting the body's natural inherent detoxification pathways. And it's specifically doing that through A, the kidneys and the urinary tract as a diuretic, B, as a lymphagogue. So cleavers is really one of my favorite lymphatic agents. Um, I love it in its gentleness. Um, you know, I think a good kind of concept uh, or principle rather of holistic herbalism is to really, you know, use the mildest remedy that you can to achieve the healing result you're looking for. Like, if cleavers will do the job, don't use poke root, right? Like, poke root's really strong. It's considered a low-dose herb. Uh, it's super strong. Um, you don't always need to use the strongest uh, medicine in the Materia Medica to just achieve the result that you're looking for. And in fact, sometimes using the strongest one is, is a bad idea, especially for people that maybe have more delicate or sensitive or weaker constitutions. Sometimes we need to use milder or gentler remedies. So that's what I really love about cleavers here is that it is a very gentle but super effective lymphatic agent. So, or lymphagogue. So I really like to use it for all manner of swollen lymph nodes. Um, but I find that it has kind of two specific areas where I find it is very effective. One is for the throat region. So cleavers is classically utilized for a lot of infectious throat uh, diseases. So tonsillitis, um, strep throat, um, uh, diphtheria was it was a classic remedy used for diphtheria. We don't really see diphtheria too much anymore, but this was a remedy used for diphtheria back in the day when that was a big problem. Um, and uh, what we see here is that it's going to help to reduce the lymphatic swelling, reduce swelling in the tonsils and the adenoids. It's going to kind of clean out that area, clean the lymphatics, like washing all of those stagnant fluids clean and clear. And, you know, some might say cleavers is like a lymphatic stimulant or working on the immune, or an immune stimulant. I mean, it is a lymphatic stimulant, but they might say it's an immune stimulant. I don't really think of it so much as an immune stimulant. I, I would say any influence it, it is having on the immune system is likely a result of its lymphatic properties because, you know, our immune system is very strongly located in our lymph. Um, so really great for that throat region and then really, really great for the pelvic region. So, and again, this is kind of that central location of the water element within the body, um, really helping to relieve, uh, swelling in the lymph, uh, especially associated with like urinary tract infections. Like if you see a UTI that's hot, irritated and inflamed, it burns when you pee, um, and there's swollen lymph nodes in the inguinal region. To me, that's like cleavers, you know? That to me is like a really good kind of specific pattern or a specific indication to me that really points towards using cleavers. And I've seen it be very, very effective in many cases of UTIs with swollen lymph nodes in the inguinal region. So 
that's a really great way to utilize cleavers um, as a lymphagog as well as a diuretic. So again, it's like a formula unto itself, right? If someone has lymphatic swelling and a urinary tract infection, we might think, oh, give them a, you know, an antimicrobial herb that's diuretic and then give them a lymphagog. But you know, you, you, got, you got them both in one here. I mean, cleavers isn't necessarily antimicrobial, but it is a great soothing diuretic and a great lymphagog. So those are kind of the main two or three actions that I tend to think of for this plan. It's, a, it's an alterative predominantly, and then more specifically as a diuretic and as a lymphatic agent. Um, and, but that lends it a whole lot of uses. Like we think of the way I think of the property of this herb is that it's like, it's cleansing the waters of the body. So anytime that there's like symptomatic patterns associated with a stagnation of fluids, specifically leading to like growths or hardened masses, um, that's where cleavers is really, really great. So it's uh, very, very useful for many of those kind of excessive growth tissue, fluid stagnation and growths in the female reproductive system. So things like uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, I find cleavers to be very, very specifically indicated there. It has application in breast lumps. Um, it can be used for mastitis and the lymphatic swelling in the breast region that can happen accompanying mastitis, um, uh, even, even skin conditions. So like boils or, um, like cystic acne, um, things where the, the tissue is really like hot and irritated. It needs to be cooled down and there's a lot of fluid, like damp skin conditions. Cleaver is really, really useful here because again, it's cleansing the lymphatics. It's cleansing through the, through the kidneys and it's just washing those fluids and the waters clean within the system. And this is a way that cleavers um, kind of broadens the perspective and approach to using this plant that, uh, that I think is really, really useful. Uh, anytime it can be, uh, a diuretic is called for, cleavers can be used as a nice gentle uh, diuretic. So things like edema and different, different forms of swelling in the lower extremities, uh, you know, kidneys aren't really clearing enough water. Uh, cleavers is a really good, um, good remedy to consider there. Um, so that's just a little bit about its actions and properties affinities again, kidney, urinary, lymphatic, and because of lymphatic immune to an extent, I really think of it for this kind of lower pelvic region, female reproductive system. And, you know, according to some, the nervous system. So um, you can't see it right now, but when the, when the plant goes to seed, um, you'll see these kind of little bulbs on there that uh, some say is like a signature of like the nerve endings, like the bulbous ends of a neuron. And so um, some herbalists actually utilize cleavers as a nervine, but more, not necessarily like as a calmative agent, like for, you know, if you're, uh, you know, having a hard time sleeping or you feel really stressed or anxious, I'm gonna sit down on my bum because my legs are falling asleep and hopefully not get stung by all the nettles here. <laughs> That's the thing, cleavers and nettles, they really like to grow next to each other in uh, these environments. And I, in that way, really like to pair them together. Uh, but anyways, uh, the nervous system, yeah, I don't really think of it so much as like, oh, I can't sleep, I'll take some cleavers. Or, oh, I'm really anxious, so I'll take some cleavers. Um, it's more from the way I was taught by Matthew Wood, who's the person that taught me about this property. Um, it's more for like inflamed nerves, like if the nerve endings are inflamed or someone's having like an inflammatory nerve disease. Um, yeah, I haven't personally really used it that way. Um, so I don't really have any experience to, to speak from, but he says it's very effective in that way. Um, so just mentioning that property. And then, um, you know, the other thing that, that cleavers, speaking of the seeds, um, is, you know, the, the, the seed pods of cleavers, you know, are like two little balls, like right next to each other like that. Right, which is a, 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 a testicular signature. And so uh, cleavers is also a really great remedy for uh, not only the female reproductive system, but also for the male reproductive system. So it is used for, um, you know, orchitis or epi, epididymitis, uh, the epididymis when it gets swollen. Um, 
soreness in the testicles. Actually, you know, it's been said if someone gets kicked in the testicles really hard or receives like a really severe blow to the testicles and they're really swollen and inflamed and in a lot of pain, which, you know, that's like a pretty, uh, high degree of pain. If anyone's ever experienced that, you know what I'm talking about, right? It can hurt and that pain can linger for a really long time. That pain can radiate up into the pelvic region. Um, sometimes it can even kind of go down the legs if it's really bad. Um, so cleavers is a remedy that's used here. Um, to help, again, kind of cool down the heat, reduce the swelling, and re relieve some of the pain associated with that. And then um, kind of moving further up in the male reproductive system, it can also be used for, for some prostate conditions, you know, inflammation in the prostate, um, swelling in the prostate especially, right? Because we're, again, the kind of pattern with cleavers is, is the, these like damp, damp accumulations. And so when you get swelling, dampness around the the prostate can be really effective there and of course many prostate issues you know tend to manifest as urinary tract issues right you have things like incontinence and difficulty urination or severe urges to urinate people waking up a lot in the night to go pee um, and so cleavers is a really effective remedy there to support the male reproductive system so so then thinking of like energetically uh you know this is generally considered like a cooling plant and ironically, it's kind of moistening, which is kind of weird because it's like, okay, it's a diuretic, so it's eliminating fluids and it's a lymphatic and it's relieving, uh, you know, lymphatic swelling and damp stagnation there. But so you would think that's kind of drying, but it's a super juicy plant, right? Like this plant is just full of juice. Um, and so the way I tend to think of cleavers here is that like in the short term, it tends to be moistening. So it's really, really nice, as I said, for like that very hot, irritable, dry, inflamed, kind of burning UTI sensation. And it does kind of moisten and soothe and cool down that heat and dryness and irritation in the urinary tract. But obviously if you're doing this like long term for a prolonged period of time, uh, you're increasing diuresis, you're peeing more, which ultimately will drain fluids from the body and leave you more dry. So I tend to think of cleavers as like, like short term or moistening, long term drying. Um, but again, this is usually kind of a short term use herb. It's not really, you know, this isn't really a plant that you're going to be taking. It's not like a tonic herb or an adaptogen or a trophy restorative that you'd be using every day and maybe higher doses for six months, eight months, 12 months, two years at a time. This is usually a relatively short-term use plant. Um, so to me, the moistening aspect I think is a little more um, applicable. And then it does have a little bit of a relaxant property, um, not necessarily anti-spasmodic per se, but you know, the, uh, the uh, eclectics and the physiomedicalists did kind of classify this as a relaxant diuretic. Um, so just noting that energetic property as well. Uh, so those are some of the main key properties that I tend to think of with cleavers in terms of its actions on the physical level. Um, you know, I do think it, this is one of those plants that is best harvested, you know, before it sets flower and goes to seed. Um, it's a little tricky to harvest because you tend to collect a lot of other plants along with it because it just turns into this big tangled mass and so sometimes you got to be a little delicate in the way that you harvest cleavers um the garbling process is usually like for us here in the northwest it's removing grasses and nettles <laughs> out of your cleavers to just get the straight cleavers um and then this plant is really from my understanding and experience is kind of useless once it's dried. Um, I think this plant is really best used fresh. And I, I know I say that pretty much in every video, just because I tend to prefer fresh plant preparations over dried plant preparations. But cleavers is one of those herbs that like, when you dry it, and like make a tea out of it, it kind of doesn't really work. Um, so there are a few herbs that, yeah, I, it's a preference of mine. And then there are certain herbs where it's like, no, you really kind of do need to use this one fresh. Whereas other plants are 
still effective and some would argue more effective when they're dried especially in tincture form um so the how so how do you so it's only like you can only really harvest it in the springtime um and so typically we want to prepare a fresh tincture of cleavers it is pretty watery mid-range alcohol tends to be effective you know one to five strength ratio is usually totally fine um, but if you can uh, you know make it up to a one to two if you can you just got to process it down really well and then um, the other way that people will utilize cleavers fresh is they will actually prepare a succus of this plant so they'll run the cleavers through a juicer and then they will um, either preserve that juice with enough alcohol to optimally preserve it which you know i would say is bringing it up to like 27 to 30 percent alcohol um will is really your kind of lowest range of alcohol to effectively preserve it or the other thing people will do is they'll juice the cleavers they'll put it the juice in ice cube trays and then they'll freeze it and then when you want to have fresh cleavers tea uh you just pop an ice cube tray um you pop pop an ice cube out and thaw it out and warm it up and then you can drink that warmed juice um and you know you would probably maybe add a little bit of water if it's you know too thick and strong to take as a straight juice so those are really the main ways that cleavers is prepared uh that i'm aware of and uh, i predominantly use the fresh tincture and i like to use it in alterative formulas um, general alterative formulas. I use it in a lot of urinary tract formulas, um, as well as formulas for a lot of the um, female reproductive tract kind of growth dynamic cysts. Um, uh, um, yeah, cysts and things like that. So then getting into our energetic architecture of this plant. So um, as you might guess, elementally speaking, I really think of this as a water element plant. Again, we're working on all those water element organs in the body, the lymphatics, which, you know, astrologically are ruled by Pisces, a water element sign, as well as the kidneys and the urinary tract, which obviously are governed uh, by the water element since that's what's eliminating the fluid elements from the body primarily obviously we eliminate fluids through sweat and things like that too but it's really the kidneys are primarily kind of controlling that water element in the body um, and then the way in which it's used to treat uh, dampness stagnation of fluids accumulation of fluids accumulation of waste products and the infection that can ensue when you have accumulation of fluids and waste products um, creating that damp environment is an environment where you know bacteria and things like that tend to flourish and so this herb is really operating on cleansing that water element cleansing the lymph cleansing the urinary tract also working on the female reproductive system which is typically considered governed by the water element as well and then considering the planetary ruler i like to correlate this plant to venus um Again, primarily because of its diuretic influence is notably Venusian. We also see that uh, Venus tends to be um, in its sign of uh, exaltation in the sign of Pisces, which governs the lymphatic system. So there is kind of this like the inner ocean, right? Pisces is the fish and represents the ocean and kind of Neptune, the god of the ocean, right? Uh, so there's this like kind of Venus Piscean dynamic in this plant and you know what and venus governs the kidneys as i said but you know one of the things that this was a, a why i love this plant so much is that it was really instrumental in my understanding of the principles of alchemy and the power and potency of spagyric herbal preparations in that like working with this plant and really seeing like the venusian correlation and then um working with clients that were complaining of venus issues right uh, there's a, a number of clients that i've had over the years that have had this kind of constellation 
of symptoms where they get chronic UTIs, really consistent UTIs, coupled with um, really unhealthy relationship dynamics where they, and these are typically women um, in relationships with men that just like really don't treat them very well, um, whether that being emotionally or physically abusive or being manipulative or being kind of controlling. Um, and, um, and, and they're kind of like, they're stuck, you know? And it's like, you kind of see that with this plant of like, the plant clings on to other plants. It's like, it, it holds and it binds to things. And, um, and so that's kind of seeing it in one way, but in the other way is like Venus governs relationship. It governs, um, how we relate to the other. And the only way cleavers grows up so tall, uh, it really grows up at all is that it's dependent on relationships with the other plants like we've got a lot of cleavers right here climbing all over this nettles like this cleavers wouldn't be this tall if it wasn't um able to kind of climb up on the nettles and so so the way the whole growth dynamic and it grows in these big communities right it's not like oh there's one cleaver and then there's another cleaver it's like no boof, it's like this huge cluster and so there's kind of like this community dynamic to cleavers that i see which is also another and a Venusian concept in the sense of this plant is dependent on relationship and Venus is the planet of relationship. And so I would kind of see these relational dynamics where these women were in these really bad, unhealthy relationships. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was just kind of part of what I noted in the intake. And then I would give them cleavers in spagyric essence form because I was seeing like, oh, they've got a relational issue They've got a chronic urinary tract issue. Venus governs both of those. So let's work on the V and then looking at their chart, we would see challenges in the natal chart associated with Venus, oftentimes related to Mars. So Mars is like the masculine archetype and um, Mars and Venus are like opposites to one another. So there would oftentimes be like squares or oppositions or quincunxes of between Venus and Mars or just Venus in a place in the chart where it's not very happy. Anyways, it give cleavers spagyric essence and, you know, chronic UTI patterns would resolve. Um, and then the relational dynamics would really resolve. Um, in some cases, that would be, you know, the person would oftentimes develop, kind of like wake up a little bit and just be like, whoa, this is not, <laughs> this is not a healthy relationship. This person is not treating me well. Like they would kind of return to themselves. Like they would be, they'd be all tangled up. You know how it is? Like in relationships sometimes it's like it gets confusing and it gets overwhelming and your heart it's your heart is being pulled in different directions and you see the good in someone but maybe they don't act in accordance with that good often or ever and so our heart gets confused and we get kind of wrapped up and tangled up kind of like a cleaver's patch is a big tangled mess and i feel like the cleavers kind of helps to detangle people from these kind of complicated relational situations and kind of return to themselves and see it for what it is and make things right whether that's bailing or whether that's having a real conversation or whether that's um you know or maybe they need to do something within themselves so i always say it's like really good for just tangled relationships like like unclear relational lines and boundaries and um just the like lack of clarity within relationships. I've seen it like over and over and over again, specifically spagyric essence preparations of this plant really help people in that way. And um, I think it's really useful. And so that's a property uh, that I find very interesting. And uh, for me, uh, it was one thing to like have these realizations of like, oh, this is like a Venus plant because of its signatures and because of its organ affinities and because of its medicinal properties. But then to like work with clients and see them having the archetype of Venus be out of balance within them psychologically, emotionally, relationally, socially, and physically, and then have this herb correct, like all of that, um, was pretty profound. And to me, that is uh, a real clear indication. And it was very instructive for me about how spagyric remedies actually work and how these plants don't just work biochemically within our system when they are prepared in accordance with the the alchemical tradition they have 
for lack of a better term, a certain magic to them uh, that changes not only our physical self, but our, our psychological, our emotional, and our spiritual self, and potentially even the environment around us. And so, um, so this is a plant that I'm just really passionate about. I love gallium, and uh, it's a wonderful plant. And it's, a, it's just a nice plant to get to know because, it's, because it is gentle, but yet it's profound. Uh, in its medicinal virtue. So gonna be uh, harvesting this cleavers today and taking it down into the lab to make our yearly uh, gallium spagyric tincture. So we'll be busy busy the rest of the day pulling all this up. Well, not all of it, but we'll leave some obviously. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, I guess that I'll say about that much about this plant. Thank you so much for joining me here. Thanks for sticking it through to the end of this video. It really does help with uh, you know YouTube algorithm and things like that if you're watching this over there. If you're listening to the podcast or watching this on YouTube or maybe uh, consuming this content anywhere other than our website, be sure to head on over to evolutionaryherbalism.com and get on our newsletter list to get updates like this on our uh, on the plant path. Um, podcast and blog and um, just really appreciate you supporting the channel. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content here. It really does help um, enable us to continue to provide free content um, for plant people like yourself. So I'm Sage of Popham. Thanks so much for joining me here. Hopefully you learned something good and new about cleavers and uh, until the next one, take care and be well. <laughs>